All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Makakwadash, the one honest to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson answering the question on whether everlasting life is ever mentioned in the Old Testament because you've got some people out there that they don't believe or they haven't heard or they don't know that the Old Testament mentions everlasting life. So when they hear the New Testament, right? Of the Bible, which is really the new covenant, which is a refreshing of the old covenant, they say in their mind, well, the New Testament ain't real because the Old Testament never mentioned such things as everlasting life, right? They try and make out as though it's a new a new concept, right? Which is not true. So first off, I'm gonna go here. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. <clears throat> See, I've set before thee this day. Life and good and death and evil. All right. So Yahweh set before the Israelites when he gave them the laws, the ways of life and the ways of death. Verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. That thou both and that thou that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love Yahweh thy power. And that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, right? That thou mayest dwell in the land which Yahweh swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, which proves that everlasting life is not for everybody, but some people are going to need more convincing than that, right? Some people say, yeah, nah, but that don't say... That don't say everlasting life though. So that's you trying to put that in there. You're just trying to put that bit in there for yourself. You're trying to make it say that the Bible don't say what you want it to say. The Bible says what it is. You got to read it in the context. Some people might say that, right? This is Isaiah chapter 25 and verse 7. And he will destroy in the mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. And Yahweh is going to do that when he reveals himself to the world through his son Yahweh Shai, right? Because Yahweh Shai is going to be so ama amazing and, and magnificent and glorious when he shows himself to the world, right? That people ain't going to be able to doubt whether Yahweh exists anymore. They're going to know that Yahweh exists because they're going to see what his son looks like and what they're going to see what his son can do, right? And he's going to let it be known that he's coming in the name of his father. And through, through, through us seeing Yahweh Shai, through the world seeing Yahweh Shai is exactly like what we said he was going to be like. We're going to receive a, a glory in the world too And Yahweh is going to see, receive a glory Through Yahweh Shai receiving glory Right so everyone's going to be happy man And in, in the kingdom We're going to receive glory Which the scriptures say our glory is our woman We're going to receive glory Based on how our women are loving and kind hearted Towards us man and they're not burning us out Telling us about ourselves You know we're going to receive glory from that Verse 7 again And he will destroy in this mountain The face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord Yahweh will wipe away tears from all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall be taken away from off all the earth. And Yahweh have spoken it. Right? So Yahweh is getting ready to swallow up death in victory. Now, some people still might say, nah, man, that's you putting that in there. You're trying to put your own thing in there. They might say that. So let's see. Let's go even more into the Bible, man, right? Because when you go into the Old Testament, I mean, excuse me, when you go into the New Testament, you read about this in the book of Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, right? The scriptures speak about the conquering of death. And I already just read about how Yahweh said to the Israelites that he's going to swallow up death in Isaiah, 20, Isaiah 25 verse 7. To verse 8, right? But let's look at this. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality, all right? So that's everlasting life for people that might question what it means by that. Everlasting life, immortality is the same thing, right? To be immortal means you will never die. 
to be mortal is how we are now. We die now, right? Even Methuselah, who lived to 696, excuse me, 969 years, even he was mortal. And that's a hell of a long time to live, man. You know how many lives and deaths he would have witnessed if he was to be alive now? If he, if he was to live a lifetime like that from now? So just to put it into perspective, somebody that's that amount of time alive, they would have witnessed the Atlantic slave trade, right? And, and all the other things, they would have witnessed the beginning of the Atlantic slave trade, man, all the way up to now, if they was born at the beginning of the Atlantic slave trade and they'd still be alive and have a good 400 plus years left, man, four or 500 plus years left. To put it into perspective, yet he was still mortal, man. Right? There hasn't net yet been an, an immortal man to walk the earth, to live on this earth yet. There's been a man that lived the immortal way, which is Yahweh Shai. He lived a life full of the law, which is the immortal way to live. Right? But there has not yet been a man that's never died on this earth before. Even Yahweh Shai died. Right? Let me carry on. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on in corruption. And this mortal was put on immortality. So, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And that's what I just read in Isaiah 25, verse 7, verse 7 to verse 8, which I'll read it again for the people listening, whoever it's going to be. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 7. He will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and a veil that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up. He will swallow up death in victory, and Yahweh and the Lord Yahweh will wipe away all tears from all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall be taken away from all, from off all the earth. For Yahweh has spoken it, so people ain't gonna be trying to burn us out no more, man. Verse nine, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our power; we have waited for him, and he will save us. This is Yahweh; we have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. So that's talking about the salvation that we've got ready to be waiting for, man. But let me carry on back in. Let me carry on back in First Corinthians 15th chapter. Because a lot of people, like, don't really know the scriptures, man. you got all these Christians that are talking about John 3, 16, and they say things, right? They open their mouth and words come out. But when you actually start quizzing them, they start switching off. They start saying, I'm not here to have a debate. They start saying, we're going to have to agree to disagree. They start saying, oh, that was in the Old Testament. Or they start saying, oh, that was done away with. Or they start saying, well, I, I, I believe in the scripture, but I don't believe it in the way that you're interpreting it. Even though you might not have interpreted nothing, you just read it to them and said, what's that saying? And they'll say, well, I'm not believing it in the way that you're interpreting it, which is cold word for saying, I don't yet, ha I don't yet have a lie to tell you to try and fit that into my doctrine. That's what that means. Verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashayak. Right? But this that that's right. Yahweh Shah is going to be who's going to give us the everlasting life. Right? But we can always show everlasting life in the new covenant. Right in the New Testament portion of the Bible, right? But this lesson is about showing it in the Old Testament. So let me go to let me go to Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter twelve, and it's going to be there clear as day for people to read it for that don't know or haven't read this before, right? Hopefully, it helps. It helps somebody, man. This is Daniel chapter twelve and verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awaken, some to everlasting life, and some to everlasting shame. Excuse me. And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Let me read it again. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt there we have it there's your everlasting life in the old covenant right there right but i got one more right because people say oh nah it's not in there but let, let me go to the apocrypha as well and show that it's mentioned in there too 
I'm sure it's mentioned in there too, man, that people knew about coming back and getting everlasting life back in them times. Uh, it's not a new concept that's came out of nowhere. This is Second Maccabees chapter 7, which is a, a, a chapter of the Bible that speaks about the force, the, the, the um, attempted forceful feeding of swine to Israelites that refused to eat the swine and therefore gave up the, their lives was the forfeit for that man. So for all you people out there that are Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans that think that eating pork is a light thing, well, it obviously wasn't a light thing when you read about the brutal deaths that our brothers and our sisters were prepared to go through to not to not eat that, man. Yet now, people be slapping it on their bread, slapping it on their burger, paying 30p extra to have it put in their meal or whatever. They were going in with that, man. But let me get this anyway. Second Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 9. And when he was at his lap, and when he was at the last gasp, he said, Thou like a fury, thou like a fury taketh us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall raise us up, who have died for his laws, unto everlasting life. So there we have it, everlasting life again, man. Right? So people that think that everlasting life is not a concept in the Old Testament don't know what they're talking about, right? Everlasting life has always been a concept that's been in the Bible, and that concept has always been promised. It's always been a thing that's been promised to the Israelites, right? It's always been a thing that's been promised to the Israelites to receive everlasting life. So it makes sense when you read the new covenant of the Bible that Yahweh Shai came to the Israelites continually talking to them about everlasting life and how that's the main topic or if not one of the main topics of the New Testament, the new covenant, because that's bringing forth what was always promised to the Israelites, right? And I'm going to end the lesson there. All praises to Yahweh Barsham Yahweh Shai, Barsham Makar Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. Shalom.